We wanted to ensure that all of our patients understand we are taking the global pandemic with coronavirus very seriously. When you come in for your orthopedic journey, you will be asked to wear a mask and all of the staff members and healthcare providers who interact with you will also be wearing a mask. We wanna make sure that you feel comfortable with the fact that we are doing everything we can to keep you safe and healthy during your orthopedic experience. Thank you. Hello and welcome to our total joint replacement class for Community Hospital of the Monterey Peninsula. My name is Sarah Hughesby, I'm the orthopedic program manager and I'm gonna introduce you to our orthopedic center staff. First, we have the interim program navigator, Jessica Hare, and our senior administrative assistant, Brianna Lua Lamana. One of us may be reaching out to you when you come for your orthopedic journey here at Community Hospital of the Monterey Peninsula, and you will hear from us as well when we make our follow-up phone calls. So without further ado, we're gonna get into the total joint replacement class for today. It is extremely important to us at CHOMP that you understand that preparation sets you up for your entire stay here with your orthopedic journey. So as part of our class today, we are here to make sure that you feel extremely comfortable with everything that you need to do before, during, and after surgery. Our total joint replacement program here is extremely comprehensive. From the moment you book your surgery with the physician's office to the moment you leave our doors to go uh, participate in physical therapy and return to the community, we are here for you as a team. Um, what you can expect from this orthopedic journey is that we will be there with you every step of the way. We have structured our program to be able to provide you with up-to-date information based off of evidence-based practice guidelines and the best um, support that we can provide you in the community. We support you also through your recovery and rehab in the community when you attend physical therapy or when you return to work or your other activities. We're here to answer any and all of your questions. And the most important thing that I want you to walk away with today is knowing that you're coming into this surgery with all the support that you need to be able to go out and recover and to get on with a better quality life. You're not having this surgery because you're sick. You're having this surgery so that you can improve your quality of life and the joy that you have with your family and friends. Our total joint replacement program is very comprehensive. We ask that you get optimized prior to surgery. What that looks like is that if you see any cardiologists, pulmonologists, nephrologists, that we know about that and that we have their clearances or physician um, approval to move forward with your surgery. We have proven pain management techniques with a multimodal pain management protocol that we will be discussing later in this video. We also have a standardized medication practice and a way of doing things through clinical pathways for each of the total joint replacements that we work with. So if you're having a total knee replacement, there is a specific clinical pathway that the entire team works with you to progress through. We also encourage early mobility and walking, which is based off of evidence that says that patients do better if they get up and move the very first day of their surgery within four hours of their surgery. So we do have physical therapists and specially trained nurses on the unit to be able to help you with that early ambulation. This leads also to shorter stays where our length of stay is usually one night for both total hips and total knees. We'll discuss that later in the video as well. You may have heard your surgeon speak to you about needing to find a coach. This person can be your spouse, loved one, friend, or community member. This person needs to be with you for at least the first three days after your surgery to ensure that you are safe at home. This helps with the recovery process and this person also needs to be available to be able to take you to your follow-up appointments and your physical therapy. Your coach will act as your advocate and they will help you to ensure that you meet all of the goals of the program. What we need from you prior to coming into 
your hospitalization is that we need a primary care provider to do a medical evaluation stating that you are healthy enough to proceed with surgery. We also need your other specialists, as mentioned before, to sign off on you going forward with surgery, just so that we can ensure that you have the best outcomes. In addition to this, we ask that you visit your dentist at least a few months prior to your surgery, if possible, and that you do not have any dental work done two weeks before surgery and up to six months after surgery. We also need for you to be very clear in your communication with us through the entire process. We want to know, are you on any blood thinners? Are you on any medications that you cannot stop, that you've been told that you should not stop by your doctor? We need to know if you have any history of recurrent infections, such as MRSA or other staph infections. We also need to know if you have any rashes or bug bites or any problems with your skin, especially on the side of the surgery. This can delay surgery, so we need to know about these things ASAP. Okay, we also need to know if you have a history of blood clots. Blood clots can be more common with lower extremity surgeries, including the hip and knee. So we want to make sure that we put you on the right anticoagulant medication for your surgery. If we know that you have a history of blood clots, the surgeon can make that appropriate decision. You will be coming to the perioperative clinic prior to your surgery, and we will get more into discussion about that later in the video. We also need you to communicate with us on the day of your surgery if you have any special preferences that you need. This includes if you need to have your glasses on immediately in the post-acute care unit where the recovery room happens, or if you need to have something provided to you, or you simply want the surgeon to know something about you that is relevant to placement for surgery or in the post-acute care. We ask that you write this down on a small communication card and provide it to your short stay nurse on the day of your surgery. You should have been provided with a binder at your um, visit when you scheduled your surgery with your surgeon. This binder is structured to be able to provide you with a timeline of check-ins and for knowing exactly what you need to do before, after, and during surgery. We do have a video that we ask you to watch. This is about making your home safe. When you come to the perioperative clinic, there is a form in your binder that they will want you to fill out that also talks about a home safety evaluation. This home safety evaluation is a guide to helping us as a program make sure that you know exactly how you need to prepare your home prior to you returning home after surgery. The most important things being making sure that all throw rugs are picked up off of the floor, that clear paths to essentials such as the bathroom, your bed, and other needs are made so that you can use your walker within your home. In your binder, you will also find a page that talks about infection prevention. We are very big about infection prevention here at Community Hospital. One of the most important things that you can do to prevent infection is washing hands. So washing hands is the number one on our list of infection preventions. Additionally, you will be provided with a CHG wash to use prior to your surgery when you come to the PAT. This wash has been shown to be able to decontaminate the body from the bacteria that is on our skin that can lead to infections. We ask that you use this for three days prior to your surgery and further directions are in your binder. We also ask that you do not shave three days prior to your surgery because that can cause an increased risk of infection as well. Good hygiene, making sure that you do not touch the incision or let anyone else touch the incision before they wash their hands is essential in the post-op time period. Proper nutrition is extremely important prior to surgery. 
What we ask is that you make sure that you're getting a balanced diet prior to surgery that's high in green vegetables, vitamins, minerals, and proteins. This will help with the recovery process. Let's get into a little bit of the anatomy. This is not gonna be a full lesson on anatomy and physiology. However, we wanna just touch point base on the types of surgeries that we are talking about here today. So hip replacement, knee replacement, and shoulder replacement. So your surgeons, I am no doubtedly, have gone over with you the um, surgical procedure and why they have worked with you to go down this path. With a hip replacement, the ball and socket joint of the hip are replaced. With the knee replacement, the knee joint, the hinge joint there is replaced. And with the shoulder replacement, there's two types of shoulder replacements. One is a reverse shoulder and one is a traditional shoulder replacement. And whichever the surgeon decides for you, they're only slightly different in their approach. One has the ball of the so and the socket in a different place. Arthritis is the most common reason for any person to need a joint replacement. Arthritis is when the cartilage-like material in the joint breaks down and you get that rubbing of bone on bone sensation where nerves are exposed. When this happens, pain occurs as well as malformations or non-union of the joint can take place. Therefore, your surgeon has taken these x-rays and sometimes MRIs to be able to confirm if they need to proceed with a total joint replacement with you. This is what a normal knee looks like, and this is what a knee with osteoarthritis looks like. Again, here, this is what a normal hip looks like, and this is what a hip with arthritis looks like. You can tell that in the film, the bone on bone has already started to occur in the arthritic hip. Artificial joints will help you to return to that quality of life that you want to pursue. Most joints last for 15 to 20 years. So we're looking for this joint to be a new lease on life for you to help decrease your pain and to be able to get back to the activities that you have set forth to do. With knees and hips, your surgeon will be the one to decide what type of material they are going to use and how they will proceed with your joint. Sometimes they do a partial joint replacement, other times it is a complete replacement, but this will be decided between you and your surgeon at the time of your scheduling. The same occurs with shoulders. And this just gives you an idea of what the traditional and what the reverse shoulder replacement look like. Okay, I'm gonna go now into what you can expect for when you're here at Community Hospital. So let's talk about your big day, okay? This is before leaving your home, you wanna make sure that you've changed the linens on your bed so that you come home to clean linens. This is all discussed in your binder on your hospital stay page. We also want you to use that CHG wash that we discussed earlier up to prevent infections and the directions are also in your binder. This is to take a shower using that specialty wash. We also want you to avoid any of the medications that you have been told to stop since your perioperative clinic visit. And we want to make sure that you only take the medications that you are asked to take with a small sip of water prior to coming in for your surgery. Let's discuss the biggest part of your recovery, which is pain control. We approach your pain with a multimodal pain control. This means that we address pain from different directions. We address nerve pain, we address your overall physical pain, surgical pain, as well as any pain from inflammation. When you come in for surgery, you will be given what we call a pre-op cocktail. As long as you have no allergies to medications or the surgeon has spoken to you and you have decided to do a different type of pre-op cocktail, it will look something like what you see on the slide. 
including an anti-inflammatory, an opioid medication, anti-nausea medication, and a steroid. We will also be giving you spinal anesthesia. The reason for this is we're able to use less of a general anesthesia. You will still be asleep for your surgery, no worries about that. But the spinal anesthesia helps you to be able to get up and moving faster, which is our goal for post-op ambulation. We will also be doing, depending on the type of surgery you have, what they call an adductor canal block for knee patients or a peripheral nerve block for hip patients. These both will help to control your pain for approximately 24 to 48 hours. You will also be receiving a field block when you're under anesthesia that will be a cocktail of medications decided by your surgeon and anesthesiologist based off of your labs. Part of our multimodal approach is making sure that on the post-op unit you have around-the-clock medication. With this medication, we want to emphasize that even if you do not feel pain when the nurse comes in to ask you what your pain score is, that you do take the around-the-clock medication. This will help to keep the pain away and make sure that you have a therapeutic amount of medication in your bloodstream. This will also help you with getting up with physical therapy and your ambulation goals. Part of the around-the-clock medication that you may see is Celebrex, Tylenol, and a potential opioid like tramadol or oxycodone. These medications also may be ordered just as needed, or PRN, for when you have an increase in pain or prior to physical therapy. We also will provide IV medication that will be available if the PO medication is not effective for you. Please note that the IV medication really should only be taken for the first few hours after surgery and that our goal is to send you home on PO medication the very next day. After surgery care begins the moment you get to the recovery room. So your home medications will be restarted when you reach the recovery room by your surgeon. Your education regarding risk factors and self-care will begin at that time as well. This will be continued education from your pre-op time period. And when you go to the main East unit or one of the other nursing units within the building, a care plan will be made for you with your nursing staff to outline exactly what the goals for your time in the hospital are. After surgery best outcomes show that getting up and moving the very first day of surgery means that you have decreased risk of complications and you also are able to reach your goals faster. This includes getting up within the first four hours after surgery, coughing and deep breathing to open up your lungs because anytime you undergo anesthesia, you can, your lungs can close down a little bit and we wanna make sure that you're taking those deep breaths, getting up, moving around, and making sure that you're really opening your lungs back up. We also are very big about fall prevention. Call don't fall is very important to us here at Community Hospital, which means that a bed alarm will be placed on your bed and the call light will be placed within your reach to make sure that you call before attempting to get up and that someone is there to assist you, especially with the first time you're getting out of bed. This is to prevent you from falling because of the general anesthesia that you have had or because of the pain medications that you may be on. We also wanna make sure that you have the appropriate equipment with you when you're getting up out of the bed, including your walker, and that your sequential devices have been removed from your legs. This will prevent any tripping hazards from happening. Part of your recovery is working with physical therapy. So I'm gonna invite up right now, Lauren, one of our physical therapists, to be able to talk to you about the goals of physical therapy and what you can expect while you're here in the hospital. 
Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm one of the physical therapists here at Community Hospital, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what to expect during your journey after your orthopedic surgery here at CHOMP. So you may see us the day of your surgery. Do not be alarmed. Um, depending on your symptoms, depending on your pain and how you're doing coming out of anesthesia, how quickly you regain your sensation in your surgical leg, you may see us that afternoon. Um, if you don't see us the afternoon of your surgery, we, we will definitely see you post-op day one. You may see us for one to two sessions, just depending on what you need to meet your goals. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you should expect from us during your sessions of physical therapy. So things we're going to talk about, we're going to practice transfers. We're going to talk about how to get in, in and out of bed. We're going to try to simulate your home environment as much as we can here in the hospital. We'll also practice, as you need to, getting in and out of the car, getting in and out of the shower, getting up and down from a different kind of chair, from a couch, whatever you feel like you need to practice so that you feel safe at home. We're also going to start walking, maybe even day of surgery. Again, do not be alarmed. We're going to keep a close eye on you. We're going to be watching your vitals as we go. We're going to be monitoring your pain. You may have nausea. You may feel a little bit dizzy. Just trust that we're keeping an eye on things and we are working with your nurse and your doctor to make sure that you have the medication you need before we get started. Your goal overall is to go home the first day after surgery. That may seem a little bit overwhelming, but again, we're going to work hard as a team to make sure that you have all the tools that you need and you feel safe to go home. As far as walking goes, likely we're going to start you walking with a walker. And we'll teach you how to, how to do it, how the pattern that you need to use to take st safe steps. We'll also talk to you a little bit about what normal looks like. How far do you walk normally? How fast do you walk normally? What kind of terrain are you going to need to navigate? And again, we're going to try to simulate that as best we can and set your goals appropriately so that you feel confident when you go home. The other thing we're going to talk about is stairs. How many stairs do you have to get into your house? Do you have stairs within your home? Even if it's a step down to the, li to the living room, we need to talk about it. Um, and again, if you have rails, if you don't have rails, we'll try to simulate all that before you leave and make sure you feel safe. The other thing we'll talk about is how to have your family help you. So even if your family members can't be here at the bedside, We'll show you how they can help you, how to stand, where to put their hands so that they can help you and they feel safe doing so. Um, the other thing we're going to talk about is how to manage your swelling and how to manage your pain. And with that comes positioning of your legs. You may have talked or seen a little bit about that on the previous slides, using your ice, using your pain medication appropriately, knowing where to put a pillow, not behind your knee. <laughs> so those are all things that we'll review to make sure that you're keeping your pain under control and especially your swelling so you can participate in therapy both with us and when you leave the hospital. Um, other things that we're going to talk about is your home exercise program. It is in your best interest to practice those exercises in your binder before you even get here. A great rule of thumb, the stronger you come in, the stronger you come out. So if you're practicing those exercises before you get here, you're going to be in great shape and you're going to already know what we're going to talk about and you'll be familiar with those exercises, so it'll just be review. But again, if you don't get, life happens, if you don't get to review them before you get here, we'll make sure you're comfortable and we'll make sure you understand everything that you need to do. As was previously mentioned, we also expect you to do the best you can to set up therapy for when you leave here, whether that's outpatient or if it looks like you may need a little more rehab before you go home, that's something that we can discuss and make sure gets arranged. Another thing that we help with as physical therapists is discharge. So we'll set goals together with you, with your family members, and then we'll assess how you're doing on post-op day one. And if it looks like you may need a little more therapy, we'll help you get as much therapy as you need. We'll also make sure that you have the equipment that you need. So we'll make sure you have a walker if you need one, and we'll make sure you know how to adjust it and what is a proper fit. The other therapist that you may see here is an occupational therapist. Uh, the occupational therapist will make sure that you have any other adaptive equipment that you need. A reacher, <laughs> a leg lifter. You may also need an extended handle sponge for when you are in the shower just to make things a little bit more comfortable for you. Those are just a couple of the pieces of equipment that the OTs may discuss with you. The occupational therapists are going to assess your activities of daily living. That's your daily routine. What you need to do to take care of yourself and maybe even what you need to do to do your job if you're still working from home. Um, so you may see both of us before you go, but again, our goal as a team is to make sure you have the equipment that you need, the skills that you need to go home safely and confidently. Prior 
prior to coming into the hospital, we want to make sure that you discuss with your surgeon physical therapy. Physical therapy should be set up for outpatient therapy for when you leave the hospital. Traditionally, for total knee replacements, this is two to three days after surgery, and for total hip replacements, this is five to seven days. However, your surgeon may be more specific about when they want you to start outpatient therapy, and this should be discussed at your pre-op appointment. If you do not have physical therapy set up prior to coming into the hospital, please communicate this with your nursing staff and the discharge planner that comes into your room. We want to make sure that you have everything set up for success for when you leave the hospital. While you're in the hospital, you will be provided with a walker. You will also be provided with a walker to go home with that you will be expected to use until the surgeon tells you you can discontinue use. This is for your safety to ensure that you do not have any falls at home or in the hospital. If for whatever reason you require continued assistance in a skilled nursing facility or other rehab, this will all be discussed with you with the discharge planner and your surgeon. Going home, we want to make sure that when you go home that you feel prepared to be there. This means that you can get out of bed unassisted, that you can walk approximately 200 feet, that you're able to dress yourself, and that you're able to do your activities of daily living independently. All of these goals will be reviewed with your physical therapist while you're here in the hospital and with your nursing staff. At the time of discharge, you will be provided with extensive discharge information. This will be in the form of an after-visit summary. In addition, you will be provided with a green form from the orthopedic center that has all of our contact information on it, and you will be receiving a follow-up phone call within 72 hours to just confirm that your pain is controlled and that everything is going well with your recovery. We will also be checking in with you to make sure that you're getting to physical therapy and that you have all of your appointments still scheduled. One of the major questions that we get asked as an orthopedic program is how do I become independent after surgery? The best answer to this is that you need to commit to physical therapy. You need to commit to doing your exercises at home that the physical therapist provides for you. You need to commit to your post-op appointments and return to your activities of daily living as soon as possible. Commitment to these goals will help you to lead a more independent and active lifestyle. There is a form in your binders called Recovery at Home. This discusses more about blood clot prevention, fall prevention, and your follow-up appointments. It also discusses pain management options that will be discussed with you at your pre-op appointment with your physician, as well as on discharge on the after-visit summary. If you have any questions along the way, we ask that you communicate with your surgeon or the orthopedic center so that we can go ahead and answer those questions for you. One of the biggest reasons why patients return to the hospital after discharge is constipation. So there is an entire section in your binders dedicated to preventing constipation postoperatively. This will also be discussed on your after visit summary and throughout your stay in the hospital. Life after joint replacement looks a little bit different for everyone. However, our goal is that you can get back to the activities of daily living that bring you joy. This includes exercising, driving, working, and participating in the sports and extracurricular activities that you enjoy. You will need to discuss with your physician any restrictions that you may have after your surgery because again, this looks different for every single patient. However, the goal is that within four to six weeks after surgery that you'll be able to return to most, if not all, of these activities. I'm going to leave you with this quote that is on this slide, and it says, I will be able to do what is asked of me. If I do what is asked of me, I will recover quickly. And I might make a slight edit to that. If I do what is asked of me, I will recover 
completely. This is our goal as an orthopedic center here at Community Hospital of the Monterey Peninsula. We really want to ensure that our patients are able to return to the community and to their active lifestyles without pain and to be able to enjoy their family, friends, and the community as a whole. If you have any questions or concerns along the way, please reach out to our orthopedic center team and we will be happy to help you. We hope that you have a wonderful orthopedic journey with us and thank you for choosing Community Hospital.